change. Big change starts small, and it starts with people. I'm Werner Puchert, and this is Finding Frequency. Will you bear with me? I want to share something with you, something I've been working on this afternoon, and I thought I'll share it here on Finding Frequency. And if this resonates or if you totally disagree, please drop me a note. I'd love to hear your comments on this. It's something that I'm kind of like working on because I have to talk about it um, at the end of the week. And I kind of had this moment of clarity during the course of the day. And I'm hoping that I'm not over baking this, but let's talk about change. Change. And in the context of my conversation, I'm talking about, you know, organizational change, specifically as it relates to uh, diversity, equity, and inclusion. And when I started off with this, I realized that when it comes to the whole diversity, equity, inclusion conversation, I am one of the advantaged. I'm a white male. If you look around the world at the moment, there's a lot of white males running big white male organizations. Just look at the big four companies in the world. That's probably not entirely true. But uh, if I think about Google, for example. But... That being said, I think it holds true in any case. I think, like I said in the beginning, we understand, you know, when it comes to change, why change is needed and then what needs to change because if you don't know that, you're kind of probably denying yourself through insights or you're just living in total denial. I mean, what needs to change to get salaries equal? Do we really have to overthink that? What needs to change to make the workplace inclusive? Is it really that hard? You know why it's hard? Because uh, we don't really understand who needs to change. Who needs to change? And why are we scared to tackle the who? Because the who might turn into insurrection on the capital. Now someone who understands the who, or understood the who, and kept a country from going into full-on civil war is Nelson Mandela. You see, he was a giant when it comes to empathy. One thing Nelson Mandela understood, and this is a quote from him, is one of the most difficult things is not to change society, but to change yourself. And if you understand that, you have an angle on anybody, everybody. So how did he do this? One of the big things he did when he went to jail for 27 years, 27 years, um, he learned the Afrikaans language. Like I mentioned, I'm an Afrikaner, South African. He learned our language. He started to understand our culture. In fact, um, when he was president, he opened some of the parliamentary sessions by reading poetry, Afrikaans poetry, in the session. Anecdotes. Also, when he was still in prison, he helped some of the prison guards with legal advice because he was a lawyer. But through all these actions, he gained a deep understanding of what made some of these people tick. What was their pains, gains, fears? And of course, in this instance, this example, he wasn't necessarily the person who needed to change, but he understood the who needs to change. The other person I want to reference is someone who actually head up, headed up the Truth and Reconciliation Commission in South Africa, Desmond Tutu, um, Archbishop Desmond Tutu. And when he was heading up this Truth and Re- Reconciliation Commission, I think that was one of the key things that they did in South Africa to stop a war from breaking out. Because she had like kind of a few options. She said, you know, uh, do like the Nuremberg trials, get all these evil people Get them into court, show trials, send them to prison or whatever you want to do with them. Or just blanket bomb them with like uh, amnesty. Like everybody's now on equal foot, everybody's innocent. No. In South Africa, we had the commission where people got together and actually shared their stories. And to be honest, honestly, it was probably the truth and reconciliation. <laughs> That's a hard word to say. The Truth and Reconciliation Commission that taught me the most. Gave me deep insights into what my fellow South Africans were experiencing. 
And for me, that was the design element that came into the whole Transition South Africa, is that commission. That was the idea because it actually helped me understand my fellow South Africans much better. It also made me understand what some of our Afrikaner folks were doing out there in the field. Evil stuff on both sides. And of course, I mean, it's not like we all worked out, walked out there with uh, guitars in our hands singing. But I think walking away from that, you had some form of empathy and, you, and an understanding. Now, probably one of the failures of South Africa was to carry that through to today. Because I think we still need a lot of empathy in South Africa and a lot more understanding. But I would argue, though, that to this day, touch wood, we haven't had a civil war. There was a transition. And I think in general, if I think of the friends and family I have back in South Africa, there's an understanding. There's a shared empathy for the experiences that we share in South Africa. And we want the country to be better. And we want our country to move towards the light of the rainbow nation, like we referred. So the point I'm trying to make is that change starts with people and understanding who you want to change. Then you need to think about how do you help that change happen? And in this example, I used the Truth and Reconciliation Commission as a conduit. And there's a lot of other ideas that you can do to uh, create that shared understanding or designing the change together and ultimately understanding what that change should look like. And then, then in the case of South Africa and the vision of Nelson Mandela is that we want it and we required freedom for all. And that's where we started. And then we reversed back, starting with empathy. So I'm not entirely sure if that makes sense, but what I'm trying to say in a very simple way when it comes to organizations is that Maybe it's time for an old white South African male to stand up and say, you know what, I want change to happen. We need to be the facilitators of the change and not just sit back and say, okay, cool, we are absorbing change because, hey, it's the new thing. It's cool, you know, as long as I can keep my job. We all need to move and design the change we want to see. And we need to understand what that design means or what that change means, sorry. Now, before I continue rambling on about this, I want to leave it there. And it was kind of refreshing spending a bit of time with some of the people from my history and also to get to know them a little bit better and perhaps see what they mean in my life today. So that was way deep for a Sunday afternoon. But I'd love to hear what you think. If you think it makes any sense or do you disagree? And of course, in the end of the day, the sad thing is also you can't change everybody. And that's the reality. You can only change those who want to change. But does it mean we shouldn't try? <laughs>